Hey everyone, Adam Zollinger here from LearnArchViz. Welcome to my channel all about architectural visualization. If you're interested in free ArcViz content or possibly joining some of my professional training courses, along with over 100,000 other students, you're in the right place. While you are here, make sure to like and subscribe if you benefit from the content. I try to post all my free stuff here on this channel, plus previews and discounts for any paid content. So click the bell icon if you want to be notified of all the latest. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, today V-Ray 5.2, I guess it's called, was released. The second update to V-Ray 5, and V-Ray 5 is awesome. I've done videos on it before, and hopefully you guys are using it because it's got some really, really nice features that streamline V-Ray in a very serious way, so it's a lot better than previous versions. They released 5.2, and there's some more great upgrades, and they one good thing about V-Ray is they're always updating and releasing new tools that are very relevant to ArcViz workflows. So that's what I really like about it. So I'm going to use this little basic scene here and just demonstrate some of the new features so that you don't have to go through and figure them all out, especially the ones that are that I think are super useful to daily workflows. So if you don't know already, Cosmos is a really great thing that V-Ray has done, just adding a bunch of assets. And they've upgraded it now to have materials as well. And these materials are super handy. And of course, they're very high quality and very good. And I haven't gone through and looked to see how they compare to the V-Ray library. I suspect they're different ones because these ones are made by other people and licensed by V-Ray or something to be in here. And these ones, I think, are made directly by Chaos Group, possibly. So it's just more materials. I know that Cosmos is so convenient that I'll probably be using it from here because this is such a nice browser and you just download it, put it in. It's great. And it's nice to not have it in two different places necessarily and just have everything in one place. So these materials are huge. If you look at my test renderings I've been doing, and I'll explain all this, but this this floor here is is one of the the textures from the new Cosmos. And of course, I wanted to try out some of these other things too. Something weird. Like, let's try these dry leaves. Of course, you just download it and then you can insert it straight into your scene. If you have the object selected, you can just import it directly and it applies. We can render. And I've got some other things going on in the scene that involve some of the new features as well. So we'll look at those too. Okay, so this is a V-Ray map that, or V-Ray texture that doesn't have I mean, leaves aren't going to work well, unless maybe if you use displacement, but really leaves should be modeled. But from far away, this would be a great texture, obviously. Let's put it back to my nice wood floor I had. But that is there for you to use. Again, awesome, awesome upgrades because they're just making it so much easier and more streamlined and giving you all this great, great content, essentially for free with purchase of the, uh, of the core software. Put this cool parquet floor in, the floor in there and we'll leave it. So, of course, there's other things in here. I mean, this chair is from Cosmos. This telescope, this lighting is from Cosmos. And I've just dragged it and dropped it in. So there's lighting. And this isn't this isn't new for the new version. They had this in the last version. But there is new assets added, and there is a bunch of materials added. One thing that I'm using in this scene is the HDRI Studio. A studio HDRI, which is really cool, and that's just lighting the scene as if it was lit like a photographer's studio. Super handy, super nice. So I don't know what all the new assets are, but it says something like over 200 new assets added to Cosmos, which I think is huge. And the whole new section of materials, which is great. Okay, so there's some upgrades to the V-Ray frame buffer as well. Let's look in here. So let me just render again. So the upgrade that they're touting in here is the blur and sharpen capabilities, which, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. That's nice to have. And I really like the new frame buffer for V-Ray 5. I, I've said before how much I love, love, love the light mix. And I'm using it here to just do different things. So the pendant, I've turned it up to five, the environment. Let's see, the studio, turned it down. Or turned it up to two. Studio could do go down to one, maybe. Anyway, you've seen the light mix before. That's awesome. The new thing is the sharpen blur. 
and all you have to do is I think this was here automatically and you just have to turn it on calculate sharpen blur and you can sharpen it a certain amount if you're looking here so sharpening now this is not something I'd like to burn in so I wouldn't want to necessarily do it here in the frame buffer and save it out because then it's kind of permanent in Photoshop you can of course do a raw image and then do blurring and sharpening in there but again in the V-Ray frame buffer, it's nice to have the capabilities to really maybe preview what you want to do in Photoshop, or sometimes you might want to just burn it in and do a quick post-processing in here and not even have to take it into Photoshop. So this is a nice thing to have. And it works similar to other sharpening tools that you may have or be used to. It's got a radius and then the amount, and then it can actually blur too. And the blur looks really good. It looks like a you know, like a nice depth of field, a natural depth of field that would you'd see in a camera. So the, the blurring is nice. Obviously, it doesn't have actual depth. That would be extremely cool if they added that. But that's not what this is. This is just blurring and or sharpening. Pretty self-explanatory. Nice to have. As always, when you're doing an effect like this, you want to just make sure not to go overboard. But a little bit of sharpening is nice. So for this scene, all I did was add a Cosmos rug, a Cosmos chair, a Cosmos Telescope, and a Cosmos Light. The other thing that I'm doing here is, well, another feature that's been added, is that with the V-Ray Atmospheric Fog, which I can show you, in the Environment tab, V-Ray Environment Fog. And I didn't do anything to this except change the color and change the fog distance. Fog distance means how far you can see through the fog. So basically how thick the fog is. And I changed the, I think it was defaulted to gray and I made it a little more warm colored. And that's all I did. And you can of course increase the quality of this. You can also limit it to certain areas. So it's not just filling your whole scene. But for this, I just want to demonstrate the new feature of V-Ray 5.2. So the new effect that we have in here is the ability to select a light and in the light, you can go to the modifier tab and inside of each of the lights, there is an effect atmospheric. Okay, so you can uncheck it entirely, but like you can do the specular and the diffuse and turn on and off if it's affecting reflections, you can now affect atmosphere and there's a spinner here to tell it how much. So I have it set to 200, which is really high. By default, I think it was just one. Okay, so you can see how much of the atmosphere is picking up. It's not a very foggy scene, but up here by the light, it looks very foggy. If we were to do a rendering like this and then turn it down, we'll say to 10 and render again. So everything over here will be at 10. This is still at 200. And you'll see that that basically goes away. There's a little bit there. And again, that fog, I just left it at default, so it's a little bit noisy and sloppy looking. But if you got a lot of refinement going on in your fog, that could be a very, very nice effect. So individually for each light, you can tell it how much it's going to affect the atmospheric. And it works with specifically with the V-Ray atmospheric fog. Okay, so that's a cool new feature. I like that. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the, the V-Ray decal. And you can see one right here on the chair. Let me just show you how it works. This is a cool thing. I like, I like the V-Ray decal because this is something that would be quite annoying to do if you didn't have something like this new V-Ray decal tool. Okay, because you know that you, you normally have to like unwrap this chair. And we don't even have that ability because this came in from Cosmos. So we don't have the original poly modeling to do a nice unwrap on it. So how would you even get a decal type item onto this chair if you wanted to do that? It'd be super hard. You'd have to do a planar UVW map and do some sort of composite material with a mask. Okay, this thing kind of streamlines that kind of process and makes it super easy. So you can see similar to like other types of V-Ray objects, it just it kind of comes in with this dummy box. And it's this arrow is showing you the direction that it's projecting. So it's projecting a decal in this direction at the size of this yellow box. And the height determines where it's going to hit. 
So because this box is intersecting the chair, that's what it's going to project onto. Okay, so a decal the size of this box will project in this direction onto this onto anything that is intersecting. So this chair, it'll actually be on the front and the back. Okay, and then the only other thing you need to do is apply a material to it. So I made this self-illuminated V-ray material and I put a mask on it, which is just a V-ray bitmap, which I instanced over to here like this. And I put the V-ray logo in there and inverted it so that it is a proper mask. Okay, so that is the mask that's right here. You can exclude objects from it just like a override material type thing. Okay, so if you only wanted to apply to the chair and there was something in the way, you could exclude items. But that's really all there is to it. If I render this, well, I don't even need to render it. It's right there. That's what the chair looks like with the decal on it. I can make that any material and I can use any mask I want. Let's turn off the blurring and sharpening. Okay, that's pretty sweet. I mean, that makes a very nice streamlined process for adding little decals to chairs. Now, if I change the size of it like this, it's going to stretch out my mask, and you'll see what happens. Okay. So really straightforward, really simple, really easy. Hopefully that helps you guys. You don't have to figure it out now. That's how the V-Ray decal works. Pretty cool. So those are the features I like of V-Ray 5.2. I think these are all really nice things. I especially love that they're adding to Cosmos and giving us all these really, really high quality materials. I mean, that streamli streamlines my workflow so much. And I still have to make a lot of custom things, but for probably 80% of the stuff I'm doing on, on a daily basis, I can just use a lot of these materials and objects and things like that and just fill out my scenes. And if nothing else, it gives you something to kind of stage your scene with and then get more feedback. And then maybe you'll have to do custom things later. But it just makes things faster and easier. And it's so nice to be able to have that nice browser and just drag things in. Okay, and then a lot of these other things are just adding mood and things to your scene. This atmospheric stuff, very cool. The sharpening and blurring. I will typically save that for Photoshop, but it is nice that it's here. The decal is super cool. That can add a lot to a scene and very easily. Like I could just put a logo on this telescope to add that little bit of detail. And that's so much easier with that decal thing than it is to try and map it onto there, right? So again, Chaos Group, killing it with the updates. Love V-Ray. Love the updates that they give us. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Hopefully that breaks down some of the new features for you and, and saves you from having to figure things out for yourself. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and like and subscribe to the channel. And also let me know in the comments what you like about the new features. If you have any questions about the new features or if I miss something, go ahead and comment about it. I'll try to pick it up in a later video. Okay, hold up guys. I forgot one thing. That's actually a cool feature that I like a lot because it's something I use all the time. And that's V-Ray Override Material has got a little bit of an upgrade. I use V-Ray Override Material all the time to figure out lighting and things like that and then adding materials later. So I actually do use Override a lot and now you can see, so this has Material Override on it but it's preserving the reflection of the original material and over here it's pre preserving the bump of the original material. Okay, so that's actually really cool because when you are figuring out the lighting, those are things you actually want to be able to see still. Okay, so I like this feature. Let me just show you how it works real quick. Video was supposed to be over already. Okay, so in the regular override material place, I have just a regular V-Ray material in there that's overriding everything. But here you can click on this and bring up options. Okay, so I put to preserve the original bump, the original reflection. I don't have any of this other stuff going on, so that didn't matter. Okay, and you can also ignore V-Ray light material. Let's do that. Okay, if we render it with those settings, We'll see, there's our object. Now, it didn't ignore our logo because that's not actually a V-Ray material. It's a V-Ray light material. It's a V-Ray material with self-illumination. So it's still got the override material on there. Okay, but you can see the reflection. You can see the bump. You can see whatever you want to preserve is still here, and that's a pretty cool feature. So that's the last thing I wanted to talk about. I promise I'm for real this time. 
Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's V-Ray 5.2.